All right, these are live pictures of Florida. Uh, yeah, there's a debate, but this is actually a Trump rally. Donald Trump is holding a rally there tonight. His son, Don Jr., you see, speaking right now. Foreign president's on the campaign trail. His business empire hanging in the balance. The New York Attorney General's office did rest the case today with that testimony from Ivanka Trump. And Kristen Holmes is out front. So, Kristen, um, Trump is going to speak. Obviously, this trial goes at the heart of every single thing uh, by which he defines himself and, and his, his life and his success. So what are you expecting tonight? Because on October 7th, yeah, Aaron, look, we're likely going to hear about the trial for two reasons. One, as you say, it has consumed him. It goes to the core of who he is, and he's been particularly angry at the fact that Ivanka had to testify, but also because of who he's speaking to tonight and the voters that he is trying to court, particularly Cuban voters. And as you know, Donald Trump has painted his legal problems as political persecution, and he believes that that will help him with Hispanic voters, which are going to be very critical in the general election. And Aaron, I have to say, former President Trump has had the general election election on his mind. He still believes he's going to be the nominee. And he was even asked today about what he would do about a specific person that we all know if they consider him as a running mate. Take a listen. Would you consider it's, it's Tucker, though, that they based on the I numbers? like Tucker a lot. I guess I would. I think I'd say I would because he's got great common sense. Now, that was the first time I've heard that. And as you know, Aaron, I talk to Trump's campaign advisors on a regular basis. But Donald Trump is one to want to stoke a show to put forward something that people will talk about. So there it was, Tucker Carlson. That would be very interesting. But as far as I've been told by campaign advisors, there's no one on a short list yet. It's all just up in the air. Right, right. It'll be whatever he thinks opportunistically at some point makes sense. All right, Kristen, thank you very much. And what Kristen's there at that rally and waiting Trump there, what he'll say about the trial comes just hours after Ivanka Trump's testimony when she said she did not recall uh, the key details at the center of big business deals and financial loans uh, that she was in charge of. Ivanka Trump has boasted on the record about how involved she was in the business. She wrote in one of her, her book, quote, I was Donald Trump's eyes and ears on the board as I was at the Trump Organization and on his reality television show. Out front now, I'm Marosa Manigault Newman. She was a contestant on that reality show, The Apprentice, and of course went on to work on Trump's 2016 campaign and to serve in the Trump White House. She's now the author of the book Unhinged, an insider's account of the Trump White House. So I'm Marosa, the, the last time we spoke, you said you were most interested in hearing Ivanka's test testimony during this fraud trial. So what was your reaction to what you heard today? Well, the first thing that I noticed, Erin, was how she walked in. It reminded me so much of her mother, Ivana, when she was going through her legal woes with Donald Trump during their divorce. She would always arrive at court dressed in all black, and she would strut in like a supermodel during Fashion Week. And that's what we saw from Ivanka. That's the first thing that I noticed. But from the readout, I was really shocked to hear that she didn't take any accountability and that she claimed to not know. This is one of the most shrewd businesswomen I have ever ever sat in a boardroom with, and I've had to do that now for three seasons with her, but also to go on and work with her in the White House. She knows every detail of every single mm -hmm. engagement that she's a part of. It doesn't matter what the transaction is. She knows the names of the players. She knows the numbers, the figures, the assets. I was a little surprised that she claimed to not have any knowledge about that aspect of the deals. Right. And in fact, you know, she said, I do not recall again and again when asked about so many of the details. Amrosa, um, including uh, the, the project, the old post office in Washington, D.C., right, the one that Trump converted into mm -hmm. a hotel. And, 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 and you, you know, sort of were around that, obviously, as part of the, the Trump team at that time yes. for quite significantly. What did you make about her testimony about that project specifically? That specific deal, she should be able to tell you how many nails went into every single uh, a wall, constructed stairs. Um, this was her project. This was her baby. She not only negotiated the financing, she helped to design it. She brought in the spa. She focused on every single detail. I know this because I also got married at this particular hotel, and she was very invested in what my wedding was going to be like in terms of marketing for the project. I believe my wedding was the first wedding held there, and she was very much invested in that. She knows every single detail of this project, and I'm really, really surprised that she would undermine her, her big public persona of being a very smart, shrewd businesswoman by saying, 
I didn't know. I only knew about the pretty stuff, the designs and the spa. It's not believable. Right. And, and why and why do you think she did that? Because, I mean, you're giving these specific examples. And I was just saying over the years, uh, you know, knowing people who had spent time with her, uh, she did know so many details. Right. That was the whole point. People would sit mm -hmm. with her at dinner and she would be talking about room rates and revenue and every single specificity. Yes. Why, what, why do you think she did this yes. today? There was only one reason that she would jeopardize herself and, and perjure herself on the stand, and that's because Donald Trump told her to do that. Um, Amarosa, you, we, we were waiting for the former president to speak at a rally. You saw Don Jr. speaking. We expect him to talk about mm -hmm. this. Um, but you just heard him, you know, dangling out there the concept of Tucker Carlson for VP. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just laughable. He's a showman. He can't help himself. He thinks the presidency is a White House. In fact, next we'll have uh, The Apprentice, the White House edition. I mean, to say Tucker, it just really undermines the importance and the seriousness of running for the highest office in this land. He literally thinks that he's going to hand out roses like he's on The Bachelor. Tucker is not a serious contender for vice president, and he knows that. All right, Amarosa, thank you. Good to talk to you. Thanks, Aaron. All right.